Welcome to Wednesday Yoga. What a week. It's, um, there's been a lot of challenges out there for everybody and our bodies don't lie. Our bodies are probably really feeling and our minds, a lot of the stresses of in school, out of school, lots of snow, blah, 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 blah. But today we're going to release a bunch of that tension. And I want you to think about our, what I'm sharing with you. If you can just take one or two tools with you out of each class, because yoga is not just on a mat, it's off the mat. It's, it's all the time. And because we're going to talk about shoulder and neck tension today, I'm going to turn sideways because I really want you to get this image that um, most of us are like this, looking at whatever, our iPads or our iPhones. And i am cr been creating a habit. I I'm still start here, but I get here pretty quickly now. And here's what I want to tell you. Tech neck is exactly what it is. Because of our technological devices, we are stressing these ligaments and tendons in our neck we're collapsing in the front of our body. We're doing real damage is the bottom line. Most of our heads weigh between 10 and 12 pounds, even up to 15 pounds. When your head is down like this, it's like you've put five or six times more weight and stress on your neck, 50, 60 pounds. Let's face it, if somebody said, hey, would you put 50 pounds of potatoes on the back of your head, please, and just carry them for me for the next couple of blocks? You'd go, no. But that's essentially what we're doing if we're not getting our devices up to here. If we don't have our computer and our iPad, seriously, guys, um, no matter how many years we have left, let's keep the life in those years. So I want to start um, lying down because I just want to check in with everyone's breathing. And the other thing I did want to remind you, I don't know how many of you get tension between your shoulder blades. I get it. And if you don't have blocks yet, no matter whose yoga classes you're taking um, at home, and I don't know when all this is going to end, many of you know this technique, but I just want to show you again quickly that if you can get two blocks, put that first one between your shoulder blades, higher than your bra strap, so higher than, and then you fool around with the other one and just get the right spot, sort of at the bottom of your occipital, where your neck and your occipital uh, wind up. Find the spot. You're not going to fall asleep. You can have your legs straight. You can have your knees bent. If you want to start here, just to remind yourself for a moment, uh, because we can still do the exercise. But I want to remind you about this one. This is a great tool for getting rid of stress between the shoulder blades. A lot of us get it underneath the shoulder blade. And then we're like, oh, I need to go see my Cairo. I need a massage. Well, these days getting anything has gotten tricky. That's why we need yoga because yoga equals self-care. Hands down, it is the best, okay? Wow, have I got a lot of stuff here in front of me today, but we're gonna cover some material. So I want you to lie on your backs, keep your knees bent, place the soles of your feet flat on the floor, take your hands and spread your fingers apart. Now we're gonna start at the belly just because it kind of helps to warm up the, um, up here is a little less comfortable for the arms. So I wanna start where it's comfortable. So your fingers are spread wide apart, right? You're placing them over your belly. Now on an exhale, I want your middle fingers to touch, okay? That's on an exhale, middle fingers are touching. So as you breathe in through your nose, of course, your fingers are going to come apart. And as you exhale, that those middle fingers should once again just touch lightly. So before we continue, let's lift the shoulder blades up, tuck them under the heart. Let's tilt the chin 
towards the notch in the neck. Now I talked to you about doing this on a number of occasions, but truly when we stand up, we're gonna do this again. It lengthens the back of your neck and stretches some of those tendons uh, that aren't very happy, okay? So let's continue to breathe. Close your eyes, separate the biting surfaces of the teeth, inhale, and exhale. Go ahead at your own rate here. Inhaling, this is just showing you that you are getting your breath right into your belly. A lot of us are just chest breathing. It's not getting down into your belly. And when we only breathe into the upper part of the lungs, it's almost like a signal for your body that you're in some kind of distress. So that even if we are in some sort of distress, we can begin to release the fear, the anxiety, the panic by activating what I'm going to call your prana pump, AKA your diaphragm. Because when you breathe fully, right into the bottom lobes of your lungs, it presses on the diaphragm that now expands and pushes and raises your belly up when you're breathing in. And as you exhale, of course, the belly collapses. So breathing long, full and deep, and deep, full, exhaling. Long, full, deep, inhaling. And deeply exhaling. Two more times at your own pace. Could you raise your hands now up towards your rib cage? Your elbows will need to go a little further out. Continuing to inhale with your hands here on your rib cage. Please visualize this entire rib cage as 360 degrees. By that, I mean that your entire rib cage, your front, your sides, and your backs are all moving, all active, stretching those intercostals. In fact, as yogis, when you deep breathe, you do stretch those muscles, intercostal muscles between the ribs so that typically yogis have a lot more energy, a lot more stamina. And as I said, if you can remember to inhale fully and deeply when you're under pressure, something is pressing on you, whether it's real, or in our heads or our hearts, please breathe. The other thing that happens, I won't go into this today, I did in the last session, but when we breathe fully, we also connect and activate the vagus nerve. The vagus nerve goes from the brain to the gut. There are more brain cells in your gut than there are in your head. So, but we want these connected. We don't always want to shoot from the hip. We also want to examine what we're feeling. And here's another little thing that I, you need to know is that when we're really emotional, upset, angry, 
This is not a good time to make any big decisions because when we're emotional, we are not very logical. So try not to make any big decisions or say anything when you're really, you know, upset, worked over. Just do your breathing. And you'll find that you have more choices in finding constructive heart connections in terms of your responses. Okay, so if you have a block, I hope you always have a block or a pillow close by when we're practicing because I want to start to open up the chest and the shoulders. Again, it's not, you know, tech neck is not just about your neck, it's your shoulders, it's your upper back. So I want you to come into a supported bridge. Now, block, pillow, cushion, bolster, whatever, place it underneath your sacrum. Now I've got it on the uh, medium height position. If I decide that becomes uncomfortable, uh, then I can, of course, lower it. And then I want you to take your arms over behind your head in that goalpost or cactus position. And I just want you to breathe here because now you're really going to notice your belly going up. You don't need any hands to feel this when you breathe in. Nice little compression at the throat area. A banda, a lock, which helps to purge bacteria, infections, any kind of sore throat, throat issues. It's always good to practice a little bit of throat compression to help the body rid itself of whatever toxins or blockages. Again, these blockages can be mental and emotional. There may be something we want to say to our children, our partner, our colleagues, our neighbors, <laughs> throwing snow in front of our driveways, or at least putting it in a place where they know the snow plow will come by and put it in front of the drive. <laughs> ah, as I've said, there's no way you're going to avoid stress in this life, but there are many ways we can mitigate it or just make a choice to not let it get under our skin, to reduce the number of issues in our tissues. And now can you just kind of straighten the arms and stretch them overhead while you're in your supported bridge pose? And then let's reach the arms up. And then lower with your bent arms, bring your elbows to the floor beside your torso. And then remove whatever is underneath. And just put it off to the side. All right, let's just keep our arms be our four top of the arms are flat on the floor next to your body and then your elbows are bent with your fingertips pointing up towards the ceiling your knees are still bent and your lower back is in neutral which means it's not well let's let's actually go through this motion let's tilt the pelvis up and let's pull the belly towards the spine and you'll press your lower back into the floor now that starts to engage your core and we're going to do a little bit of core work so anybody who's got a sore back from shoveling please be mindful this may not be for you today or if you um, are up for it just practice always with awareness respect and compassion let's bring the heels in line with the sits bones so feet are still flat on the floor knees are bent top of the arms right snug in beside your body your lower back is pressed into the floor. That starts to engage your lower abs. Now, sore backs sometimes occur because we don't have a strong core, strong abdominal muscles, which is why I wanted to do a little bit of core work, some ankle footwork, and neck and shoulders 
these three areas are probably where many of us experience um, our most stress and tension. Okay, let's bring now the right knee in towards the chest and extend the left leg down out in front. Here's where I want to warm up the ankles before we start doing exercises. So you've interlocked your fingers around your shin, two inches below your knee, and you know this one. We're going to point and we're going to flex. Please do this slowly. Notice what's going on. Think about your feet and your ankles like the tires and the shock absorbers on your car. They take a lot of heat and pressure. So now rotate. You've got 33 joints in the foot and ankle on each side. So that's a total of 66. Plantar fasciitis, damaged Achilles tendons, all of these things, well, we hope we can avoid them. But if we get them, then we need to also try to figure out how we can help heal them. I'll be talking about the six best doctors at the end of the class. I'll give you one right now. One of them is rest. Okay, let's draw the other knee up and extend the right leg down in front. Interlock your fingers two inches below the knee on the shin of the left side. And again, you're going to point and flex. Point and flex. If you do this really quickly, you can't get the benefits of slow moving, stretching, flexing, mobilizing lubricating joints. And now rotate the foot at the ankle. We do this frequently, not because I can't think of other things to do. I just want you to be doing the things that are really going to make a difference to your health, your vitality, protecting your joints, your ligaments and tendons from injury. So whether it's pointing or flexing, and you know, if you're if if the muscles or ligaments are feeling a little tired here, that's not a bad thing. All right? That means you're really working it. If on the other hand you feel any pain, well, that's your sign to back off. Okay. Now, here's the little bit of core work we're going to do. We're going to bring opposite hand to opposite knee. So let's start right now with the left hand on the right knee, the right knee being bent. Okay, head can stay on the floor or if you feel like lifting it off because you need to look. So let's change opposite hand to opposite knee and change. Now, the hand that's not doing anything, I want you to take it over behind your head and change. So one arm is straight over behind your head. As I said, you can leave your head on the floor and then opposite hand to opposite knee. The arm that's not doing anything goes behind your head and change and change. Feel your core activating here. Changing. Again, change. And last time. And then bring your knees in and give yourself a good hug. Okay, keep your knees bent. Once again, place your right ankle on your left knee. Take your arms out to the side. Walk that left foot over towards the right side of your mat. So left foot is on the floor. You're taking it to the opposite side. And then you're going to draw both knees over to the left, both knees over to the left. Giving your lower back a good stretch. So in cold weather, it's even more important that we stretch a little more because if we head outside and the muscles are not warmed up and we wipe out or we're going tobogganing with the kids, your ligaments, tendons, and muscles will be a lot more resilient. So breathe into, you might be feeling your hip here, your glutes, 
whatever it is, wherever the tightness or tension is, breathe into it. By holding a little longer, we give the muscles, ligaments and tendons a chance to stretch, a chance to release. Inhale, come back to center, uncross that leg, center yourself once again on the mat, place your left ankle on your right knee and then take the right foot over to the left and slowly lower both over to the right side. Then you might notice a difference from one side to the other. And breathe. So if you need a little more stretch here, then roll a little more onto your right hip. Really work it. This is a nice stretch too for the intercostal muscles again, the rib cage, the armpit, opening up the chest, front of the body. <sighs> Inhale, come back to center. And now bring your knees towards your chest, place your hands underneath the backs of your thighs. And let's rock up and then we're coming over onto our knees. Okay, once again, here's where you're gonna need a cushion. Well, if you own Aruna, and by the way, I hope it wasn't confusing for you to find it. I, long story, but didn't know how to change the subject line. This is the Aruna I was talking about. I, you know, I got four of them now. Well, had to get one for tech guy. If you think you're stiff. <laughs> Okay, so here's the deal. We're going to stretch the top of the foot. Now, people who have um, uh, foot or knee injuries, you're not going to do this. For sure, you're not going to do it. But what I want you to do is maybe stand up. You can do it like that, okay? So anyone who's got knee issues, you're not going on your knees. Just do this. I want you to, we're stretching the front of the ankle. Everybody else whose knees are still okay, your knees are together, your feet, are almost as wide as the mat. Some of you are able to sit in front, uh, I mean, sit on the floor without something. It's not about that. It's about stretching the front of the foot. Toes are pointing backwards. We're going to do the uh, another stretch after this to stretch the, the um, plantar fascia. And we'll also be checking in with the Achilles tendon. Um, as I said, the foot is such a pillar of strength. We're also going to check in with whether we're pronators or supernators. Supernators roll out, me. Pronators roll in. Most people are pronators. Um, okay, so all together, there's a hundred muscles, uh, ligaments, and tendons in the foot and ankle area. One quarter of all bones are found in the feet. All right, so that is a really good stretch. Now we're gonna do just the opposite. And again, if, you're, uh, if your knees are bad and you can't be on your knees, you're gonna to come to a standing position and you're just gonna flex like that, okay? But I'm coming down I'm going to be on my knees. You can always use a blanket or something under your knees. I want you to curl your toes under. Now, for some of us, this will be plenty. Keep, you can keep your fingers on the floor. So you're curling your toes under. Some of us, stretching the plantar fascia. It's like taffy. So taffy isn't really stretchy but you can stretch it. Remember back in the day? Boy, I haven't even seen that stuff around anymore. It's a good thing. No wonder I had cavities. But um, so it's, it's not something that you can really lengthen, but it does need to be uh, stretched out and massaged. And by the way, rolling pin, tennis ball, even a can, a small can, you know you can roll that under your feet. It's like reflexology, self-massage for your foot. Wow. Okay. Big stretch. All righty. 
Let's roll back onto the soles of the feet. Ha, 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 ha. Okay, everyone's feet alive now. Hanging out like a rag doll. Just let your head hang here. This releases a lot of tension and stress from the shoulders. Now you need to relax. Now, also, please let your head hang. You hold it up all day. Let it just hang out. So keep a soft bend in the knees and just hang like a raggedy Ann or Andy doll. You can give your head the yes and the no. Mm. And just know the tension is draining out, draining down your arms, out of your fingers. And then let's slowly roll up one vertebra at a time. Keep your chin tucked into your chest. It will be the last thing to come up. Ah, all righty. So now, when we were lying down, I suggested that you um, lengthen your back of your neck by tilting your chin down. Now, this may feel a bit awkward, but lots of times our head is just sort of not as centered as it could be. And the, and the reality is, is that your, your nose and your chin should almost be lining up with your sternum. So remember, sternum needs to be lifted. One thing to check in with yourself is whether or not you're just kind of collapsed into here and collapsed into here. So let's review mountain pose because again, this one is brilliant for your feet. It's brilliant for your posture, your neck, your shoulders. So feet one fist width apart outside of your feet, um, perpendicular to the outsides of your mat. And then I want you to lift your toes off the floor. Feel your big toe mount pressing into the floor. Now feel your baby toe mount pressing into the floor. In fact, um, if you know you are a pronator, which means your knees knock and you collapse in and you have flat arches, you really need to be sure that you're getting arch support in shoes that you wear on a regular basis, really important. It'll affect your knees health, your hip health. Um, your legs will just be happier. All right, and then center front of the heel and now lay your toes down. And now lift up at your sternum. Inhale the shoulders up to the ears. Exhale, roll them back. And let's do this a few times. Bring them up to your ears push them back, making circles, up, back, down, up, back, down. And now we're gonna do real quick, up, down, up, down, up, down. Ha! Ah. And then one more time, up, back, bring them to your side, turn your palms out, to externally rotate and open and lengthen your collarbone and then turn your hands back. Let your chin float horizontal, parallel with the floor. Imagine the crown, Sahasra Chakra, connecting to the ethers, to heaven. Have a little Buddha smile. Thighs are engaged by lifting up on your kneecaps, tailbone pointing down, perfect posture. Tadasana. You're already 10 pounds lighter in appearance and two or three inches taller in reality when you stand up tall. Most of us don't. Don't forget to use the wall. Brilliant for reminding yourself to get this shoulders back ahead up against a wall. Okay, so let's do a little exercise now. See if you can lift just your big toes off the floor. Just your big toe. Okay, you might have to look down. Just lift your big toe off the floor. I'll tell you what this means in a minute. So just your big toes, not the other ones. Okay, lay your big toes down. Now keep your big toes down 
And can you lift the other toes off the floor, the rest of them, not the big toe, just the other ones. Now, if the first exercise lifting your big toe off the floor was easier, you're probably a supinator. That means you're probably rolling your feet out. And that's me. But if you found it easier to lift all your toes off the floor, then you are a pronator. That means you're rolling in and that means you need to be wearing good arch support because there's a collapse. So once again, let's just stand here in Tadasana. If you know that you probably roll inwards, your feet roll inwards and 85% of people apparently roll inwards. So more people are rolling, are collapsing. Visualize lifting your arch up right now. Feel that. Feel your arch lifting. Can you feel that, tech guy? Maybe you have shoes on. Not as easy. Oh, okay. So let's let's come up to the front of the mat and let's do our sun salutations. And if you, any, anybody needs a sip of water, go for that. Okay, coming up to the fronts of your mat, sun salutations, working out all kinds of tension and stress. Inhale in place, exhale, hands in prayer. Step your feet apart, arms up, reach up, look up and arc back. Ah. And then inhale, reach up, exhale, lifting out of your waist, fold from the tops of your legs, Bring your fingertips to the floor. Please let your head hang. Back in our Raggedy Ann, Andy, but we're getting a little stretch here through the backs of the legs. Step your right leg back, drop your knee to the mat. Bring your other hand onto the opposite knees. And then if you're going to take your knee off the floor, come on up now, focus your gaze, press through the heel of your back foot. Again, we're flexing the toes, stretching the fascia on the foot. Inhale, sweep the arms up, breathing, turn your hands forward, spread your fingers apart, bring them to the mat, take the other leg back and draw your heart center towards your thumbs. If this is too much for your wrists, lower your knees and then lift your feet off and cross at the ankles. But try to work on developing your upper body, arm and shoulder strength. So it's not just about stretching in yoga, it's about strengthening, releasing tension, but having enough strength to handle life. These days, it seems we need more than we ever thought. Release your knees to the mat, flatten the tops of your feet by pointing your toes backwards on the mat your toes will be pointing backwards but tops of your feet are flat leave your hands where they are slowly take your buttocks back towards your heels maybe your forearms and elbows can come to the floor and then slowly come forward take your time And if you can, release your chest and your chin to the floor. And then slide everything out behind you. Line up the edges of your fingertips with the edges of your shoulders. Bring your elbows into your side body and then press your elbows and forearms down towards the floor. Roll an invisible alley with your nose. You're looking down at the floor. On an inhale, press hips and pelvis as you lift head, neck, shoulders, chest coming up. Breathing, strengthening the lower back. One more inhale to lift, exhale to lengthen and lower. Curl your toes under, lift your hips up. Walk your feet a few inches forward. Bend your knees, press your belly onto your thighs. Now, line your ears with your inner arms, press all 10 fingers into the mat. 
slowly press your heels down towards the floor. This is where we get the best stretch for the Achilles tendon. People who play racket sports really need to be sure they've got this nice and stretched, but it's also stretching your gastronomius muscles, your calf muscles. It's stretching your plantar fasciitis. So this is downward dog. There are so many benefits I talk about. Of course, it's an inversion. It's an energizing posture, but because we're focusing on feet, ankles, and all of the important ligaments and tendons. In fact, the, the um, Achilles tendon is the strongest in your body. Lift that right leg up, look at your right hand, swing that foot as far forward as you can. If it doesn't go very far, pick it up at the ankle, bring it to the front. Other leg comes forward, let your head hang, that raggedy and uttanasana. This is, the stress is just dripping off your, your shoulders here. So this, again, it is an inversion. There's lots of benefits, the compression on the abdomen, but we're focusing here on releasing tension from the neck and the shoulders. So the only way you're going to release it sometimes is just let it go. Okay. Straighten your legs, bring your arms beside your ears, pull your bellies towards your, um, your spine, inner spine, inhale, sweep the arms in front, reaching up, feet apart for balance, reach up, look up, arc back, and then inhale, bring your feet back together, lift up out of your waist, exhale, forward fold, head hangs, bend your knees, inhale, sweep the arms, up and overhead, and then bring your palms together into Anjali Mudra. And release your arms down. Okay, let's do one more round on the other side, and then we'll come back down onto the mat. Inhale, exhale, hands in prayer. Step your feet apart, arms up, reach up, look up and arc back. Inhale, reach up, lifting up out of your waist. Exhale with a flat back, forward folding, reaching, stretching, coming into Uttanasana. Let your head hang. In fact, give your head a shake so you know what it feels like to let the weight of your head stretch out your cervical vertebra. And now step your left leg back. Bring your hands on to that front right knee. You can stay here and bring your arms up or lifting the back knee off the floor. The back leg is your anchor. So press into that back heel, inhale and sweep the arms up. Holding that invisible beach ball, keeping the shoulders down, rib cage in, focus your gaze for balanced postures. Holding the posture, but never holding your breath unless we're doing pranayama. Turn your hands forward, spread your fingers apart, and take that front leg back and draw your heart center towards your thumbs. So if you're in your plank posture, remember, please engage your core. It works your core. It strengthens your entire uh, abdominal region. Of course, upper arms and shoulders, breathing, reaching forward through the crown of your head, feeling the flexion of the toes, the stretch of the plantar fascia, and then release your knees, flatten the tops of your feet, leave your hands where they are, slowly bring your buttocks back towards your heels, Release your forearms and elbows onto the mat. Slowly come forward, stay nice and low. So this opens up the upper back big time. That's why this is hard for a lot of people. They've gotten rounded. The upper spine has become stiff. Practicing with awareness, respect and compassion for where your body is today. No judgment, just Observing where you're at. 
and then extend your legs out behind you. Line up the edges of your fingertips with the edges of your shoulders. Bring your elbows into your side body. Press your forearms down to the floor. Press your hips and pelvis into the floor. Keep the tops of your feet flat on the floor with the toes pointing towards the end of your mat. So roll an invisible alley with your nose. And now, if you wish, you can press up into the fuller expression of cobra. Feet can come apart a little bit, but keep your elbows in. Don't let them wing out and keep your shoulders down away from your ears. Most of us will not be able to straighten our arms without losing the integrity and the alignment of wrists, elbows, shoulders. One more, inhale up and then lengthen as you exhale and lower down. Curl your toes under, lift your hips up, walk your feet a few inches forward. And again, bend your knees, press your belly onto your thighs, press your chest towards your knees, align your ears with your inner arms. Make sure you're pressing all 10 fingers into the mat, but especially your thumb and your baby fingers. And on an exhale, you're pressing your sits bones towards the back wall and you're attempting to straighten your legs and you're pressing your heels towards the floor. My heels are not touching the floor, but I'm getting a wonderful stretch and that's all that we're asking here. It's not about your heels touching the floor. It's about feeling the stretch in your foot, ankle, Achilles tendon, calves, and backs of knees. And let's lift the left leg up in the air. Look at your left hand. Swing that foot as far forward as you can. Or pick it up at the ankle and move it. Let's hang out in our raggedy Ann or Andy. You don't have to have your legs straight here, but if they are, fine. Let your head hang. Bring your arms beside your ears. Engage your thighs by lifting up on your kneecaps. Pull your belly in towards your lower spine. And with your arms coming up straight in front like a stick person, reaching up, feet apart for bounce. Look up, reach up, arc back. Inhale, stretch up. Exhale, forward fold. Bend your knees, sweep the arms out to the side, reaching up and overhead. Bring your hands together, exhale. Hands in Anjali Mudra, flat out and relaxing. We're lying down once again on your mats. When you're lying down on your mat, Let's turn the palms up in the open and facing um, upwards in position. This rotates your humerus arm bone in the shoulder socket. Because once again, when our arms are forward, that bone is rotated forward. So that means the ligaments in the front don't get any stretching or any love. So by turning the palms up in the opening and receiving position, we can start to relax the ligaments and tendons that hold that bone in the joint. Relax the ones on the back and stretch the ones on the front. So it may appear you're just relaxing and you're doing nothing but basically you're allowing the benefits of what you have just done to be integrated, very important. And opening up the chest. I have a tremendous number of uh, yoga books, really interesting, and a lot of what, um, some of what we're doing today 
comes from a book called Acu Yoga. So it's actually acupressure. Again, another form of taking care of your body yourself. It's lovely if we can get massages and go and see a chiropractor or an osteopath on a regular basis, but most of us don't have access for many different reasons. It's expensive, it's time consuming. Um, so know that doing what you're doing is giving yourself the self-care that you deserve and need in order to feel, well, does ageless appeal to anyone? Tech guy just put his hand up. I'm into being ageless. It's just a number. There are three numbers. One of them is your chronological age. One of them is your biological age. And the last one is your psychological age. And I will tell you that the first one is the least important. And then the next two are extremely important. What's going on inside of your body is really important. And, um, and then how you feel about yourself, how you feel about life. These are the ages. These are the markers. These are the true markers of age. And I'll get back to you again when I'm 120. Okay. Now, we are going to do or try to do our shoulder stand. Having said that, if you're not up for the shoulder stand, no worries. What I will ask you to do, though, is to get your cushion or your block and get your legs up in the air. So if you're not going to do shoulder stand, find a block, a cushion, put it underneath your sacrum and just get your legs up in the air. If you're close to a wall and you wanna put your heels up on the wall, this form of relaxation and draining the blood that pools in the ankles, the stale blood, well, I just, it's, it's rejuvenating. There's just one word for it, it's rejuvenating. Those of us who are going to do shoulder stand are also, we're doing this more for the shoulder uh, area. This is, gets into um, a lot of acupoints that release the tension from the shoulder. So lying on the floor <clears throat> with your arms beside your body and your knees bent, let's swing the legs up and just halfway over behind your head, just for starters here. Okay, and then lower the knees towards the head and walk your hands up towards the middle of your back, up towards your waist or higher if that's available. And then let's straighten the legs. This is also powerful for clearing, again, this throat lock, Jolanda Bonda, for clearing toxins, bacteria, waste, basically bringing some energy to the throat area, the fifth chakra, the place from which we find our voice to speak and say and be heard especially about things that matter that are important to us i'm just reminded now of one of the great relationship counselors owen williams is his name not to be confused with the actor owen wilson but owen williams he said it's not what we say that kills a relationship, it's what we don't say. So when we look into matters of the fifth chakra, what are we holding back saying that's eating away at us, that's chipping away at our relationships? Okay, take your legs wide apart and carefully, slowly lower them down over behind your head. Go very, very slow. Don't be in a hurry. And inhale, lift your legs back up. And exhale, legs back down. Inhale, 
legs back up and bring them together. Of course, this is really nourishing for your thyroid, parathyroid, all of the endocrine glands in the head, the pineal, hypothalamus, pituitary. This is why Sharvangasana is known as the queen position of yoga. Headstand, the king. Slowly lower the legs over behind your head. Release your hands to the floor and slowly, 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 releasing the torso and then the legs all the way down to the floor. Take your heels to the edges of your mat. So you're spreading your legs wide apart. Your arms are beside your body. This is going to be another stellar move for undoing some of the damage we do to our necks from looking at our technology. So lift your upper back off the floor. Come on to your elbows. Gently release your head and neck backwards and come on to the crown of your head. There should not be much weight on the head, but this is the one of the great panaceas for where we've been having our head, but I do hope that you will really work at not looking down at your devices. Even books, you know, I use a recipe holder when I'm really studying a text and making notes, rather than having the book flat on the table, I prop it up. So you can use your recipe holders. There are book holders out there to hold that book up so that your head is not constantly in that forward position, which doesn't just double or triple or quadruple. It's five or six times the weight of your head and you're shaving bits of the bone off the cervical vertebra. So the real damage being done. And then slowly lift your head up and come on back down onto the floor. Arms beside the body once again. And just gently roll your head to one side and over to the other. And one more time to the first side. And last time over to the other side. Okay, bring your hands underneath the backs of your thighs. We're gonna rock up, core. Doesn't get much better than boat pose. And then we'll do a couple more foot exercises that are interesting to help us avoid bunions. Okay, so in boat pose, Navasana, place your hands underneath the backs of your knees and lift your feet off the floor. So you're finding that sweet spot of balance. Please press your shoulders back, pull your bellies in. So just doing this much may well be as far as you'll wanna go in this posture. Some of us you wanna try and straighten your legs. Breathing. And then can you release one hand, release the other hand. Okay, come on all the way down. That is a difficult posture. Place your hands, one hand on each knee, rocking from side to side. The wider the knee, the more area you can cover. We're not doing Navasana again, but if you feel inspired <laughs> when you're watching television, and remember, sitting on the floor is not such a bad thing. In fact, it helps to develop your back muscles by not just slumping into a chair. Okay, hands underneath the backs of your thighs. Rock up to a seated position. Bring
you're going to take opposite hand and thread your fingers through your toes. Now, that might be painful for you, so just take it easy. Um, I've done this quite a few times, and I also will wear um, something around my toes, because what happens is bunions, hammer toes, calluses, all kinds of things. Shoes are great. They protect our feet, but they also do things to our feet that aren't necessarily healthy. And today, unfortunately, um, there's an awful lot of footwear out there that's not good for your feet. It has no arch support. It's just flat. In fact, those belly slippers, when they came out, I was like, mm, no, they might look smart, but I don't think they're good for your feet. So good idea to really pay attention. So this actually helps avoid bunions. Now, if you've already got bunions, I would doubt that it would remove it, but I would say that it will hold it at bay. Okay? So fingers, and if, you know, the further you can shove them through, the more you straighten and bring some amazing uh, energy to those toes. Let's try the other leg or the foot. So threading your fingers through. I have to shove them down. <laughs> and you know, at this point, you can do some bending and move them around. It definitely brings great circulation. I mean, how do your toes, and by the way, balance and proprioception and moving through the world, 70% of it is based on what you can feel in your feet. The other 30% are your eyes and your ears, your ears, of course, for balance, um, because that's where those things, I forget what they're called right now, it's on the tip of my tongue, but um, yeah. Hey, little nutrition insight, yams and sweet potatoes, one of the healthiest foods, you know you see them in the grocery store all the time, you can cut them into round circles, you know, maybe somewhere between a quarter or half inch, and saute them very slowly in coconut oil, the solid stuff. Those are medium chain triglycerides. They're quite healthy for you. Uh, just something different. It just changes up the flavor a little bit. So in a really slow cooker, whatever spices you like, I mean, salt and pepper, of course, are great. But if you're, if you're not eating them, it's an easy food to eat. It's super healthy. The fiber is unbelievable. Great for your microbiome. Um, sweet potato or yam? Yum, 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 yum. Great food to be eating this time of year. They're plentiful. OK, and then let's just do one more posture. Happy baby. This is also now <laughs> my other little tip is that before I go to bed, I like putting really good creams on my feet. And this is how I do it on my bed. I kind of do the happy baby thing and I rub my cream in it, you know, and then I might sh put my legs up and give them a good shake. Just, you know, all day long, even if you're sitting in a chair, all that blood flow is just pooling in your ankles. So in happy baby, you might need your feet down here to grab them if you can. And then if you're able, your knees are outside of your uh, torso. Your ankles are directly above your knees. This is a beautiful stretch. Lots of benefits here. And you can you could grab your toes if you like and just kind of straighten them out. But this really gets some energy reversing the blood flow, giving the valves in your legs a bit of a break. And of course, this is beautiful for bringing calm to your lower back, stretching your hamstrings, and then release, extend your legs all the way down in front, sliding your heels out. Turn your palms up in the open and receiving position. Close your eyes. Separate the biting surfaces of your teeth. Relax your jaw and let your body be soft and heavy. 
So the six best doctors are, first, the sun. This time of year, however, it's not bright enough to give you the vitamin D you need. I hope you're all taking almost a minimum of 4,000 international units a day. I've just upped mine to 5,000. Great defense against um, viruses, bacteria, really important. But six best doctors, the sun. Rest is the second best doctor. We've never needed it more to try to make sure we can balance and spend more time with our parasympathetic nervous system activated because stress levels are out of control and stress is totally damaging. It's, it's destroying health. It is the cause of dis-ease. When you're not, when you're stressed, you're not at ease, period. Um, third best doctor, exercise. Got that one covered today. You can tick that off. Wholesome diet. Hopefully that's, you know, you're working on that all the time. Self-respect. Big one. In fact, in meditation tomorrow, I'm going to talk about self-control and self-esteem. Uh, that's at 10 o'clock live. Uh, and then finally, good friends. And I consider all of you as being good friends because we're sharing something that is essential, important, um, activating our humanity so that when we're off our mat, we can feel good about who we are and what we offer to those we love and the world at large. Thank you so much. Namaste.